Welcome to Caribbean Straight Talk with real conversations and great interviews. When you need a professional stager to make your property more appealing for your target buyer, look no further than Zepp Bolai Lawrence, Realtor and Property Stager with Fuchsia Realty Group. Give her a call at 321-689-3467 or email her at zepbl9 at gmail.com. Zepp Bolai Lawrence, Realtor and Property Stager with Fuchsia Realty Group. Give her a call, 321-689-3467. Inviting you to join Lima Dunbar along with DJs Code Red and Kevorkian on the People's Chat Room every Saturday from 12 to 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern Standard Time on iTunesRadio.com. Hi, this is Lima Dunbar for Caribbean Straight Talk. And if you've been looking at all our episodes thus far, you know that what we do is we bring real conversations and straight talk. All right. Our host, Mr. George Busun, is away on location. And tonight, another interesting one, Mr. Peter Gracie. Mr. Gracie is the representative for the Southern States for the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council. Welcome to the show, Peter. Should I call it Peter or Mr. Gracie or Peter Gracie or it's the end of the evening? So what can I say? You can call me Al. Huh? <laughs> you can call me Al. Call me Al. All right. <laughs> Al. Okay. <laughs> you, can, you can call anything. Anything you want to call me, you can call me. Okay. I'll call you anything. Anything. Can you there please you tell, us, tell our listeners who Peter Gracie is, please? Quite interesting um, question, and I'm humbled to be here tonight. Let me just say I'm humbled and honored to be here tonight as a Global Jamaica Diaspora Council representative for the Southern 13 United States. And I'm deeply grateful to everyone um, who voted for me and to those who supported me through the process. I, I visited when I was campaigning on this program and now I'm back as the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council representative. I am very passionate about the Jamaican diaspora and, and the work that it does to promote the Jamaican culture and, and heritage around, around the world, in the US and around the world. And I'm committed to upholding the values and the principles of the Jamaica diaspora and to making sure that our voice is being heard I'm also committed to working with other members of the council to ensure that our goals and objectives are met. And I'm excited for the opportunity um, to collaborate with other diaspora members and to help make a difference in the lives of Jamaicans around the world, even Caribbean um, uh, people, you know, those from the, the Caribbean on a whole at large. Um, I'm also confident that we can all make a positive impact in our communities and that together we can help to build a better future for our people, um, Jamaican, Caribbean. Um, so thank you all for your support and um, for those who voted for me and who saw me on this program before. And I just, I just want to say I'm looking forward to work with, working with you all. Now, who's Peter Gracie? Um, Peter so Gracie. I you is, to answer the question. I'm, I'm making fun of you. Go ahead. <laughs> Who is Peter no, Gracie? Well, I have to. I have to. I have to say thanks before because I I was on this program before when I was campaigning, and mm -hmm. I'm sure there's a few people who probably watched and probably uh, supported their vote. 
So I just want to make sure that they, they understand that I'm humble, you know, before I start to go into who I am, because who I am is not as important as, as telling them thanks, you know? So um, I'm, I was born and raised in Kingston, Jamaica. Um, from a from a place called Waterhouse in the district of Cockburn Pen in Jamaica. Um, I grew up through the ranks um, of the, you know, the certain communities, um, and I attended the Jamaica College, where the elite of elite um, comes out of the Jamaica College. Fervent opus in campus, work is burning in the field. We're always working. Um, I, I migrated to the United States and I did some time in the military reserves here. And, um, you know, I did quite a few things in, you know, been through quite a few different um, career choices, lack of better words. And now I'm here. Now I'm your global Jamaica diaspora council representative. All right. You know? So we have to say congratulations because you are right. When you were campaigning, you were a guest on Caribbean Street Talk. Mm -hmm. So I got to say congratulations on behalf of all of us here at Caribbean Street Talk. You made it. But here's the thing. We want to know. What has been on your short list since being chosen as a representative for the Southern States for the God, it's so long for the Southern States for the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council. What is your short list? Well, I'm very focused on education. Uh -huh. And even before um, I was running, I was, I, I was involved in education through scholarships, through a nonprofit that I found called This is Jamaica. The mission of This is Jamaica is to empower the children of Jamaica to restore and preserve their uh, culture through uh, poetry and the creative arts. And we have quite a, it's quite an interesting program. It's a poem I wrote called This is Jamaica. And the children of Jamaica um, in every primary and high school level will get an opportunity to enter that scholarship because it's pushed through the Jamaica Teachers Association. And so each child has the opportunity to do a video rendition of that poem and they are able to win scholarships and become ambassadors for this is Jamaica. So we're, I'm deeply rooted into the, into the early education, early childhood education system on a cognitive level, because we have to make sure that these kids understand that there's more out there as far as um, more things of substance than someone giving them a gun and things like that to start teaching them to scam people and all that, you know? So we have to try to capture them before and educate them. And also while we're educating them, their parents are, are being educated. And we're also educating teachers at the same time, you know, because we have to play a role in the 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 um the the, the things that we know as far as what works for us in the diaspora. We have to also introduce it to Jamaica, while Jamaica introduce what they know we don't to us. So it's a give and take. So as far as okay, education, but, I've but, been but, totally embedded in education. Okay, but it sounds to me like if you are merging what you currently do as Peter Gracie before you became the representative with what you are currently doing as a representative. So is that part of your shortlist? It's, it's, that's why I'm saying it's hard to say that I have a shortlist because what I tried to try to do is I didn't know what the what mandates the Ministry of Foreign Affairs are going to come with, because they do have mandates and they will say, well, this is what you can do and this is what you can't do. So what I did, I started to doing a lot of stuff that would have been on my short list. So in case they come and say, well, you can't do this. Well, I was doing it before, so you can't tell me to stop. You know, so um, so I've created um, programs like that, um, and I've also. Um, created programs as far as things like um, like the Jamaica Children's Council. You know, I just haven't spoken too much about it yet. And this is where children, the children of Jamaica will be able to be presidents and vice presidents of an organization and, um, and run it on their own overseen by an adult. You know, so we're giving them a voice because they're gonna okay. replace us. You know, and so this is my piece of the puzzle. I have to make sure that um, I play a part where the diaspora is secure in a, for the next generation, you know. So do you do this as a part of a whole or is it just you alone? 
So in other words, is there a committee um, that you'll get together as part that, that falls under the umbrella of the Southern states representatives for the council and you'll get these things done or is it just you alone doing this? Well, that's what I was doing. Um, actually, I have a nonprofit. It's a 501c3 and we have mm -hmm. a president, vice president, and the whole deal. I'm not, I don't have a portfolio in the company because I never care for titles, you know? So um, we have an entire organization that's running it, right? Um, group of people running it right now. We also re um, recently received a um, grant from, from the Broad County Sheriff's Office in South Florida, where we have a program right now, it's called a play program where we're teaching children uh, about child trafficking and things like that. So okay. we've, we, we're have we pretty much totally involved as a, a recognized 501c3. Okay. A frequently asked question, because I did go to the website, a frequently asked question from the website of the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council is the following. Is the council an arm of the government of Jamaica? The response on the website is the Global Jamaica Diaspora, the Diaspora Council is not an arm of the government of Jamaica. By the way, Mr. Gracie, this is a long one, okay? Is not an arm of the government of Jamaica. Members serve in the capacity of members uh, of the diaspora. Views expressed by the council members, therefore, are not deemed to be representative of the views of the government. So my question is this. How can, um, how is it that um, the Diaspora Council can take such a significant responsibility to contribute, and this is on the website, contribute to the national development in wide ranging sectors, such as education, health, agriculture, environment, the arts, sports and culture, citizen security, development, expertise, faith-based community, commerce, and not fall under at least the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. I'm sure that um, information or statistics are collected whenever the Diaspora Council does like workshops and stuff like that. So when they do stuff like that, workshops and stuff, who is all this information given to? Um, bottom line here is I'm trying to figure out if you guys are not part of the government or part of a branch of the government, who do you all answer to? Where do you the all global, get your funds and stuff like that? The Global Jamaica Diaspora Council re reports to the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. The minister is a part of the government. Even though we report to them, we're like uh, an arm of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. That's where mm -hmm. we fall under. But we don't have portfolios. We, we don't have a seat in parliament. So therefore, I don't we're know in a. You see my expression. I'm like, huh? <laughs> so we don't. So we don't. So we don't it's because we don't have a seat in the parliament. Uh -huh. I mean, that's discussions that they um been had for the past three years. Should the global Jamaica diaspora um council rep um have a seat in parliament? And when I was campaigning, that was part of my campaign to say, yeah, we need to have a seat. Uh -huh. We need to voice our opinion. And the reason why I, I was running on that, it's because no one knows the diaspora like us, you know, because they're in Jamaica. And the thing is, if my job is to listen to the voice of the diaspora and report it back to the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade and make recommendations, if I give you the information and you take it back to parliament, by the time you take it back, that information is going to be skewed because it yeah. becomes third party information. Now, yeah. well, well, you probably even more than third party information. But if and, and the thing is, the minister cannot express the emotions of how the person felt or organization felt when I when I was listening to it. So the way mm -hmm. I could I could um, convey that information, the minister won't be able to because I can't convey the same emotions that I heard to her and that she gives it back to parliament. So I advocated that we should we should have um, a seat and it's something that's been on the table they've been discussing. The minute they give us a seat in the parliament, we somewhat become an arm of the government. And that's yeah, that a lot that of- That changes things. It changes things and it's a lot of legal work. It's a lot of 
what jurisdiction does this fall under? And now, now that um, the diaspora representative, representative is a part of parliament, how does, how does that affect voting? You know, who, who votes? Mm -hmm. You know, like uh -huh. the people in Arizona, what jurisdiction would they fall under? You know, so it's it's tricky. When you might hear it and you might say, well, it doesn't make sense or whatever, but there's a lot of things that goes with it that you would really have to take in consideration for making that happen. Well, I think it would make sense, you know? And um, we had uh, Mr. Wayne Golding on, not too long after we had you on the last time. And um, we had some conversation about that, not of course in, to this detail, in such details, but I would think it would make a whole lot of sense because the diaspora in and of itself, and they're gonna find out is very, very influential. There are a lot of y'all here, just as there's a lot of Trinis here, a lot of us here. We are going to take a break. And when we return, we will have our conversation we will continue our conversation with Mr. Peter Gracie, representative, and I got to look at it because if I don't look at it, I'm going to jack it up. <laughs> representative for the Southern States for the Global J Jamaica Diaspora Council. We will be back. Hey, it's your girl, Coach Lady Mia, inviting you to check out some shows on Glow 365 TV, starting with yours truly, the Mia Allman Show, Holistic Health Show with Coach Dawn, Sisters of Faith with Coach Lady Q, and The Sophie G Show with Coach Sophie G. Streaming on YouTube at Glow 365 TV Shows every Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Also, rebroadcast on Caribbean Rhythms Radio online at crrnetworkinc.com every Thursdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Val Branch Duncan, Realtor with North Star First Properties. Her name says it all, where V stands for valuable, A, attentive, L, for loyal. If you are buying or selling properties in the Caribbean and North America, Val can help. She is specialized to assist you in Jamaica, Grenada, Guyana, Barbados, Bahamas, and Trinidad and Tobago. Give Val a call at 321-303-9345 or 407-844-8622. Val Branch Duncan, Realtor with North Star First Properties. Please give her a call again at 321-303-9345 or 407-844-8622. Orlando Kitties Carnival invites you to come on out and see all the mass bands at the United Band Launch on Sunday, April 2nd from 2 to 8 p.m. at Orlando Island Boys Yard located at 1525 Flowerdale Drive, Orlando, Florida. Music by Island Beat Radio DJs and more. Food and drinks on sale. So come on out on Sunday, April 2nd from 2 to 8 p.m. for the United Kitties Carnival band launching. And we are back. Again, my name is Lima Dunbar. This is Caribbean Straight Talk, Real Conversations. Everything you get is real, real, real. We don't shiggity, we don't jive. It's on the up and up. Our co-host, Mr. George Busu, is on location. So it's your sister girl here, Miss Lima Dunbar. Okay. And our guest tonight is Mr. Peter Gracie. So, Mr. Gracie, I'll call you Peter. Peter, how have you been able to navigate your joint responsibilities as the new representative for the Jamaica Diaspora Council for the Southern States and that of your other projects? Listen, <laughs> working is for losers, you know. And I'm going to explain why I said that before they put me on the, on the, in the cancel culture. If you do what you love, if you do what you love, you never work. And a lot of people out there, they're, they're, they're doing all these things that they were not. Their purpose doesn't serve it. Serves it. And so, and so there's, there's a lot of um, pressure on them. 
to get things done and to navigate themselves. But if you do what you love, it's not work. You never work. So for me to keep to do this and do what I, the other things that I'm doing, I want to. You know, it's 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 nothing to me because I'm not working. It's not work for me. So, you know, so, I can so, properly serve. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I, I can I can properly serve. I can move around. I can navigate myself. Um, I'm a smart fellow. I think I'm I think I'm pretty. I think uh, upstairs is is okay. You know, I know how to do these things, and I think I work really good under pressure. You know, so um, I don't see it as I don't see it as really of a challenge because I live for challenges. You know, and I've been doing this for so long. I'm waiting for something bigger to happen to challenge me. You know, so okay, but let's back let's back it up a bit because uh -huh. when I asked you that first question, which was uh, your short list. You were saying that you have a short list, but so far it seems as if you haven't been able to effectively address some of those uh, items on your short list because. Um, the reason why I can't address some of the things on, on the short list, it's because we haven't been properly welcomed as yet by the ministry. And there's mandates that the ministry is going to put forth. And I want to make sure that a lot of things that I'm doing are in line with these mandates. Mm -hmm. And the reason why the ministry is taking so long is because there are um, representatives globally, the global Jamaica diaspora. There's representatives in Africa, in the UK, in Asia, in Canada, in the US. So we, they have to come up with this time where they can get everyone together and address the council and so that's what they're putting together once that comes together and we get the official go ahead this is what you can or can't do this is what we learned from the last um tenure the last three years so we're going to change this and change that i don't want to disrespect the ministry you know and start just throwing things out there and saying things that can actually go against the mandates of the ministry mm -hmm. Well, the reason why I went back to that first question is because um, uh, when you, 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 you know, you were sharing with us that you're a smart guy and I, I have no doubt <laughs> that you are. All right. But I, I kind of felt that um, maybe your, uh, your duties as uh, the representative has not yet kicked in. So maybe when it kicks in after they formally done the introductions and you're like all, you know, having that that little powwow as to okay where you all where you all stand what you can do and all of that maybe we could have a conversation again about um how you man, your listen, listen. <laughs> miss miss Muslima, listen i'm always yeah. open to your show you know that i'm always right. open to someone i'm show just with. saying because when 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 they introduce you and and you guys they're all of you and you all start to get business going it might be a little bit difficult to walk and chew, chew gum. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'll, I'll, I'll always make time for you. Is that, is that, is that me? I'm talking about doing your projects, and then of course everything that is expected of you as the, as the, the, the new representative for the council. So we'll bring you back, and we'll have that conversation in a couple of months. By the way, how long is that term for? Three years. Wow. Okay. All right. Okay. I want to advocate to bring, I want to advocate to cut it down to two. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because because it's the position itself is a voluntary position mm. and there's a lot of people out there who would love to serve. You know, and we want to try to make sure that um if if there's so many people who want to serve their community out there and they're running in these elections and you see that they're coming out that it really mean it really truly means that they want to serve so we should give people the opportunity as much as we can you know every two years we bring someone in new or whatever you know well i i, I i'm gonna disagree politely. Uh -huh. and here's why i'm gonna disagree politely because it's taken i feel that once you you actually start to to pick up steam the two years mm -hmm. are finished so 
so that means that some of the things that you may want to do, you won't have the time to do it because your term is at an end. Well, the thing is, we can say that and we can look at it that way, not, but in reality is, is whenever we become representatives, like for instance, the, 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 the past representative for the Southern um, US, Dr. Cunningham, he created mm -hmm. organizations that are still in place that we came and saw that we take, would benefit from, you know, to, in, to, to tap into those resources and keep it moving. And we just keep building on it. So as okay. past representative, immediate past representative, there will always be there as advisors. It's not like we're just gonna just get up and leave. And because it's nonpartisan, it's not politically driven. We're not talking about, well, you know, the government in a power and this and that and all that. No, we're helping each other to build a diaspora. Now, there's nothing that doesn't say we can't run again. You know, we can run again. So, um, so we give people the opportunity to come in and try to, you know, and I can run again. And if, if it works, it works. If not, so be it. All right, cool. You have a new initiative that focuses on emerging authors. Who are some of the other creators behind this initiative and what is the goal? Well, here's the thing. Reading is very important. Reading is, I don't know how some people think about reading, but from, here goes my crazy head again, right? This is the way I see it. Me personally, this is just my personal opinion. It has nothing to do with anyone, so don't judge me, all right? I'll try not to. <laughs> so, imagine that you have a very insightful author, very inspirational and enlightened. And it took him 40 years to figure out something, to write a book and put it out there. I can read that book in two days and take that journey of 40 years with that author without actually physically being there to experience what he went through to get there, you know? So I can now get in his head and I can figure out how to maneuver myself, you know, based on the situations that he went through and the experiences that he had without actually going there myself, you know? And why it's so important for me also is that the net, probably in the next two or three years, a lot of these, these children aren't gonna be reading because most of everything that's gonna happen is gonna be generated through artificial intelligence. You know, so we have to get back into this book thing. We have to get back into this reading. We have to monkey see, monkey do. We have to show our kids that we still read and in turn, they will read. We have to, these are things that we, 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 we must get involved in. We, there's no choice when it comes to this because there's always this little thing, this little joke that they always, and to me, it's not a joke, that they always say, if you wanna hide something from black people, you put in a book, you know? I, that's to me, that, that's not funny, you know? And I see where though it's actually, it it's actually pans out to be true for the most part, because a lot of black people, as far as the demographics don't read, you know? And it's even getting worse because everyone phone, head, is, head is down like this, in their phones 24 sevens, scrolling, 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 Even but no one opening a book and their head is going left to right or right to left. It's just focusing on this thing, just scrolling up and down. And in reality, that's not healthy. So I think I have a duty to actually, if I can even get one child to read a book for a year, I feel I'm successful. Well, everything that you said there, I totally agree. And as one, as a nerd to probably another nerd, let me say this, nothing is better than opening a book and a brand new book and smelling the pages. Oh my God. All right. Um, what does Black History Month mean to you? Well, 
the importance of celebrating black history as a Jamaican leader of the diaspora. In that capacity, I would say, um, to me, it's, to me, it's, it's, everywhere we look, the contributions of our, of our African and Caribbean ancestral heritage to the world is undeniable. Although we have made a lot of leaps and progress over the decades, there is still much to work, still much work to be done and to recognize and celebrate the history of our ancestors. And it's essential that we recognize and celebrate our African and Caribbean heritage, not only because, not only because it's a source of pride and knowledge, but also because it helps us to identify with our own culture and to understand the role of our forefathers, um, the, the, the roles that they had shaping our societies all over the world. For example, our ancestors, their tireless efforts and determination over centuries to, to survive and overcome the tragedy of slavery is inspirational. And these things we cannot forget. It must not be forgotten. When we, when, when we, when we celebrate and honor our black history, it can help to build bridges between cultures and foster understanding and respect, you know? It can also open up dialogues about um, our history and the struggles of our ancestors. There's a lot of things when you really think about the black. We, look, first of all, let me say this. We have to ensure that our, set, our, our celebration of our history includes honest dialogue and and about the past and one that recognized both the sufferings and the triumph you know that 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 we 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 recognized over over the years in addition to this celebrating celebrating our heritage helps to promote our cultural values for generations to come we have to keep celebrating it just like reading we have to keep reading you know so just like we're celebrating this culture we cannot stop we cannot let people force us to say black history doesn't make smart doesn't make sense and this and that and da, da 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 you know we have to keep celebrating it whether whether it's just a month or it's the entire year but this these things are especially true for jamaicans and other caribbean nations who have a rich and diverse cultural legacy to celebrate you know so we can't you we, we, we can use our culture to build bridges show solidarity um, um, we show solidarity and and just unite people from different backgrounds and experiences. You know, our shared heritage binds us together and provides us with a platform to create meaningful changes in our community. It's really important that we get these things in our head. You know, you can look outside. You just, you just. Once you can say, this is who I am, that's it. There's no, you can't change the fact that we're black. You know, and this Listen, is it. This is such a passionate response. I really appreciate that simply because, I don't know, when you ask someone a question like that, you sit down and you wait to hear what's going to come back at you. And I was pleasantly surprised. So thank you very much. So the next question I have kind of taps into what you said. What were you surprised about? Oh Lord, he has surprised about that, my right? answer. You surprised about no, my answer. I was pleasantly surprised about your response. Well, you doubted me. You know. so I'm, just messing. I'm just messing with oh, you. Also, it's your turn to mess with me. All right. Okay. I've had it. Okay. So I'm gonna I have a, a question that I'm gonna ask, and then um we'll take a break on the other side of that question. What are your thoughts on African American students? I'm sorry, African-American studies, AP classes being blocked in Florida until certain topics are taken out of the curriculum. What are your thoughts on that? I.e., we're talking about the governor of you know where. Listen, there's nothing to think about. <laughs> this is a no-brainer. There's absolutely nothing to think about. Because I've seen some things that have been introduced into the classrooms over the past few years. 
And I'm not even sure why they would even think about taking this out while those things are going in. Um, I don't have anything against any communities um, as far as different cultures, choices for people, what they want to do, what they want to do. But when you have something like African American AP classes and you want to block some of these things, what is the mess? What are you really trying to say? That what, you're a racist, what? but not. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to go there. Yeah. I mean, what are you really <laughs> trying to say? You know, what is the message you're trying to send? Because the thing is, most of the time, it's not what you do. Sometimes what you do may create a mess and people be talking about it, talking about it, but there's a machine going on in the back that no one knows about. There's this thing turning in the back. Monies are being exchanged. People are talking, lobbying, this, that, 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 while people on the front fighting for all these things. But well, in the back, I see this. I see this as, as his way of trying to cancel. When you talk about the term cancel culture, this is cancel culture here. You know, literally canceling our culture because it has been known that when a people or people can't remember or don't know anything about their history or their culture, what happens? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And unfortunately, a lot of us is at that point. Right now, as we speak, a lot of black people, I should say, including a lot of Jamaicans, in my opinion, is that they would say, that's wrong and we can't do that and that's crazy and this and that. But at the same time, you have these guys going around bleaching their face. Ooh. They lose the identity here, but they're fighting for it over there. It don't make sense. Mm -hmm. You need to know who you are as a you whole. You need to know person. who you are. Yes, you, you can't a fight for one over here so and you do something else over there. So it, it don't make any mm -hmm. sense. You know, um, you have people over there, they... they you have some people over there, they're, sh they're ashamed that their nose is broad. But at the same time, they're fighting to keep this AP class. You see, a lot of these people that you find doing these things, I don't want to call any particular race or anything, they know that we're confused. They know that we're confused because... They, they know, know that, that we're confused and they're trying to tap into that because when you're divided, you can conquer. I bet divided you can conquer. They know we're confused, and they know you're confused when you can, when they, when you just live in comfortable and you don't even have a community of your own. You know, for instance, let me give you an example. Have you ever seen an Asian person going into a buy jerk chicken or going to a black store buying anything? You don't see that, but you see a lot of black people going to these store buying hair products and these and these in all these stores and going to these Chinese fast food buffets and all that. But you don't you ever see them come into your store? You don't nope. see that because nope. they created this community that's working for them. And we cannot have that community because most black people spend their money in these Asian places and they don't spend money with us. That's one sign of confusion. That's that's that in and of itself is also uh it falls under critical race theory in a kind of kind of sort of way. I mean we've been asking people for years when we when here's the thing eh? i have found and i'm sure you're going to agree with me that a lot of people will listen to or spend money with no disrespect to people like beyonce and and, and the likes of them but take that same money and go into a caribbean community they will not do that they will not support you because in their minds we ain't good enough which you saying you you also say that's self-hate too. There's a lot of self-hate going around. And, and, a, and a, in, a, in, a, in many, many ways, they refuse, refuse to support each one. There's so many, hear me, so many money. There's trillions of dollars, billions, not trillions, but billions of dollars that leave the black community, the Caribbean community and go elsewhere. And if they take that and spend by black, by Caribbean, we will do much better as a people. Mm -hmm. But it's like they're hard-headed, you know, you know, your mother and them used to say that, or they're hard-headed, they're pig-headed. They're hard-headed, self-hate. 
Good conversation, yeah. Peter. Good conversation. We got to take a break, though. We got to take a break. When we return, we will, um, I think we may be wrapping it up. I'm not so sure yet. Let's see how the conversation goes. This is Lima. We're taking a break. A break. When we return, it'll be our, again, I got to look at it. Mm. The representative for the Southern States for the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council, Mr. Peter Gracie. We'll be back iTunes Entertainment Magazine, where the focus is to bring information and entertainment wrapped in a little something extra that is pertinent and relative to all of us, regardless of culture. Our features aim at catering somewhat to the curiosity in all of us, whether it be business, entertainment, health and wellness, immigration, our youth, and more. So please visit our website at www.itunesentertainmentmagazine.com or itunesentmagazine.com. Also inviting you to check us out on iTunes. IG and Twitter at iTunes and Mag. When you need a professional stager to make your property more appealing for your target buyer, look no further than Zepp Bolai Lawrence, realtor and property stager with Fuchelet Realty Group. Give her a call at 321-689-3467 or email her at zepbl9 at gmail.com. Zepp Bolai Lawrence, realtor and property stager with Fuchelet Realty Group. Give her a call, 321-689-3467. Orlando, 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 the queen of soca is coming. Culture Fed crew, get ready for Patrice Roberts. Like yourself. Look where we reach again. And I've been in the streets again. Saturday, May 27th, 2023. Patrice singing all her hits. I go drink water and mind my business. Patrice Roberts. Oh gosh, you're sweet. That is what I have been falling out. Patrice Roberts. Alongside the A-Team Band, Orlando Carnival Weekend. For tickets and more info, call 352-874-3304. Or get them online at culturefedweekend.com or eventbrite.com. This is Lima Dunbar right here on Caribbean Street Talk. And... Tonight is some real straight talk. I tell you, he's shooting from the hip. Pleasantly surprised, pleasantly surprised by Mr. And I know he's going to give me a hard time for saying that, but you know what? It is what it is. I walked right through that door. Mr. Peter Gracie. Mr. Gracie, you're good. I'm good. All right. Yes. Why, in your estimation, does it appear that many Caribbean Americans within the diaspora do not appear to understand that our history is intertwined with that of our African American brothers and sisters? What do you believe can be done to further assist with allowing this alliance to occur and engage? For me to give you an answer and say this is the solution, I would be lying to you. And the reason why I said that is because um, I think we have people like Marcus Garvey who came here and tried his best to get a lot of things done. And look what happened. He got deported. Mm -hmm. You know, you have people like Malcolm X and um, and Martin Luther King, Dr. Martin, Martin Luther King. We have... Um, we have so many influential leaders that show up and keep beating into the heads of people and say, look, do this, do this. The Honorable, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, the Honorable Farid um, Muhammad, um, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, um, all, these, all these influential leaders, they, they'll come and say, look, 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 do this, do this, do this. But the system knows how to hold on to the black people. The system knows how to take a hold of them and shake them up. And no matter how we try to beat into them and say, stop doing this, stop doing this, is that they can't get it. They can't get it. You know why? Because as soon as they, they, they have to, to make a change, a lot of us are going to have to suffer. And a lot of us are going to have to die for these changes. 
and a lot of people are afraid to die. You know, and then because the minute they start fighting and they, start, they feel like they start suffering and there's no food, guess what? They can go in the food stamp line and the government get them some food and then come pull them right back in. You understand what I'm saying? So there's these, there's these things, these machines that are turning. Cycle. The cycle. Yes. And so it's really hard. It's really hard, especially when you find things are becoming so, so it's not simple. Things are always simple. But the simple things we make complicated. And I feel we, so hopeless after you said that. <laughs> we you know what I'm this, saying? Yeah. That, that, that sucks, man. That, that really sucks. That, that is so... Ugh. It sucks because there's, there's this thing. I, I, if you go back and watch people like Malcolm X when he talk about the ballot or the bullet and things like these speeches that he made, it's the same thing he's talking about. He's saying you have Republicans and Democrats. The only reason why black people are Democrats is because the Democrats got a hold of them before the Rep Republican did. You know, because if the Republican had gotten a hold of them before the Democrats, you have more black people who are Republicans. And to be honest with you, most Jamaicans are conservative. So most Jamaicans are really. It's not are just Jamaicans. Most West <laughs> Indians. I had this, yes. I made that comment to someone else that mm -hmm. most um, Caribbean people. Hispanics too are conservatives, mm -hmm. and when they ha when you start bringing up stuff like um, same sex marriage and stuff like that, they go like this because it's like oh, we don't believe in that, yeah. you know. So I really think I, I have been an independent for uh, for for the past two cycles because I don't like the the Democrats and I sure as hell don't like the Republicans, you know. But I vote where my spe my interests are, are taken care of, you know. But yeah, you're right. Most Caribbean people are conservative. I I I, I don't mind voting in, in a presidential election, but I really don't care for it. I more care for my local munici municipality. That's where the meat is. Because I'll tell you this. Right. Because when you come to me and you say to me, help me. And I say, okay, I can bring you 500 people to vote for you because I believe in what you're doing. And you don't do it, I can walk down to City Hall and I can drape your pants and say, you need to change the tune. But guess what? When it comes to a presidential election, once you vote, you're out of reach. They do exactly whatever they want to do, whatever they, how they want to do it. And you have to hope and pray and hold on to your hat and that the storm don't blow you away. You know, mm -hmm. but guess what? You still have to exercise your rights. True. You know, you still have True. to go out, vote for somebody, figure out what's going on and see if you can help to make a change. There's nothing wrong with that. But I'm more concerned about my local municipalities mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. the big commissioners, whole, state yes. representatives. Mm -hmm. um, and if everyone understood the importance of state and local, then the Republicans would not be in control of the Florida House of Legislatives. They would not be. But it's, a, it's about educating, 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 and helping people to connect how their lives are going with voting what is not happening in their lives with voting regardless of whether or not you like to do it or not voting is the only only legal way we have that can allow change to happen so that's it no, no matter what you do in this country mm -hmm. no matter what you do in this country you will always have that voice to vote True and that. it's just true of course but that's one voice they can't take away from you if you navigate yourself properly. You know, they can't... See, the thing is this, you know, and forgive me for saying these things because I try not to bring some of these things out because it may not have to do with the Global Jamaican Diaspora Council. But the thing is, a lot of us are mentally enslaved. And the thing about it is, if somebody can say something to you and it makes you act. You're mentally enslaved. Meant to, this nowadays, mental slavery is a choice. Nowadays, mm -hmm. the new slavery. As a man think it, so is he. So is he. And the thing about it is, that I can say to you, Lima, don't open your mouth and don't say anything because what you ever say is wrong. And you ever say, okay, you're enslaved because you can. 
you can, probably cannot control everything out there in front of you because that's external. But you damn well sure right can control everything that comes out of you. Mm -hmm. And no one's supposed to control that but you. Mm -hmm. but you. And if anybody can say something and make you shift a certain way, you're enslaved. You're enslaved. Mm -hmm. Right. So you're it's a choice right. you have to either go that way or go your way. But a lot of people are afraid because they have this fear of the false evidence appearing real that if they do something, something might happen. They're afraid of something that never happened yet. So they already lose the battle. Um, we, in my profession, we call that distorted thinking. <laughs> there you go. So. Distorted thinking. This is such an interesting conversation, but we gotta go. Gotta go. You can't gotta stay go. here. Gotta go home, but you can't gotta stay go. here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Very interesting conversation. And we encourage you, we invite you to return to Caribbean Street Talk because, I mean, everything that you had to say tonight real conversations real talk and that's what we're about so i appreciate, appreciate that we appreciate you thank you you're welcome you're welcome so that brings us to the end of this particular episode of caribbean street talk our guest tonight mr peter gracie and i uh you know i gotta read that thing <laughs> the representative oh, well, for the seventh <laughs> The representative. <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be a shorter way to say this, okay? The representative for the Southern States for the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council. I hope Peter, when I come night. back, you, I hope when I come back, you have it right. <laughs> Give me a shorter way to say it. <laughs> There's not a shorter way. <laughs> There's no shorter way. You have a blessed evening. We will see you, and you return to the our show, Caribbean Street Talk. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good night. You too. Val Branch Duncan, realtor with North Star First Properties. Her name says it all, where V stands for valuable, A, attentive, L, for loyal. If you are buying or selling properties in the Caribbean and North America, Val can help. She is specialized to assist you in Jamaica, Grenada, Guyana, Barbados, Bahamas and Trinidad and Tobago. Give Val a call at 321-303-9345 or 407-844-8622. Val Branch Duncan, Realtor with North Star First Properties. Please give her a call again at 321-303-9345 or 407-844-8622. Hey, it's your girl, Coach Lady Mia, inviting you to check out some shows on Glow 365 TV, starting with yours truly, The Mia Almond Show, Holistic Health Show with Coach Dawn, Sisters of Faith with Coach Lady Q, and The Sophie G Show with Coach Sophie G. Streaming on YouTube at Glow 365 TV Shows every Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Also, rebroadcast on Caribbean Rhythms Radio online at crrnetworkinc.com every Thursdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Orlando Kitties Carnival invites you to come on out and see all the mass bands at the United Band Launch on Sunday, April 2nd from 2 to 8 p.m. at Orlando Island Boys Yard located at 1525 Flowerdale Drive, Orlando, Florida. Music by Island Beat Radio DJs and more. Food and drinks on sale. So come on out on Sunday, April 2nd from 2 to 8 p.m. for the United Kitties Carnival Band Launching iTunes Entertainment Magazine, where the focus is to bring information and entertainment wrapped in a little something extra that is pertinent and relative to all of us, regardless of culture. Our features aim at catering somewhat to the curiosity in all of us, whether it be business, entertainment, health and wellness, immigration, our youth, and more. So please visit our website at www.itunesentertainmentmagazine.com or itunesentmagazine.com. Also inviting you to check us out on on IG and Twitter at iTunes and Mag. Hola.
Orlando. 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 The queen of soca is coming. Culture Fed crew, get ready for Patrice Roberts. Like yourself. Look where we reach again. And I've been about the industry again. Saturday, May 27th, 2023. Patrice singing all her hits. I go drink water and mind my business. Patrice Roberts. Oh gosh, you're sweet. That is what I have. Patrice Roberts. Carry on. Carry on, baby. Alongside the A Team Band, Orlando Carnival Weekend. For tickets and more info, call 352 874 3304 or get them online at culturefedweekend.com or eventbrite.com. Make up a love room, Jaja. 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 Make up a love room. This is Professor GT inviting you to join Lima Dunbar along with DJs Code Red and Kevorkian on the People's Chat Room every Saturday from 12 to 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern Standard Time on iTunesRadio.com. Caribbean Street Talk, streaming on iTunes Radio, online at itunesradio.com, Mondays at 8 p.m. Eastern. The show is also streamed on islandbeatradio.net, Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern. Thank you for joining us tonight. We'll see you on the next episode of Caribbean Street Talk. Also, inviting you to like and subscribe on YouTube and our Facebook page at Caribbean Straight Talk. This show is executive produced by George Brissot Jr., Lima Dunbar, Mia Allman, and music by Theron Shaw, guitarist, and powered by iTunes Radio and Quilly Works Empowerment Broadcast Network.